this video i am going to talk about important points about power system analysis subject for the upcoming online examination also practice the multiple choice questions unit wise through the links provided at the description box unit 1 important points power system analysis unit 1 introduction first formula per unit value example per unit impedance is equal to actual impedance divided by base impedance then base impedance formula kbb square divided by mbab these two are new values this calculation is required for transmission line the actual impedance value given the base impedance of the transmission line it can be calculated by using this formula both are new values this is change of base formula z per unit mu or x per unit mu is equal to x per unit volt kbb volt divided by kbb nu the whole square in the mbab nu divided by mbab volt this one is the ratio formula voltage ratio formula for find out the new base voltages one old one base voltage is known means another one base voltage is calculated in the transformer one side to another side by using this formula kvb on hv side divided by kvb on lv side is equal to k hv side rating divided by lv side rating uh, this is the new base value transformer one side hv side base value is known means just cross multiply this formula this two are this old value then this is the formula for calculate the y bus matrix here a is the incident matrix uh, we, that is the matrix which is form uh, node versus branch here node um, node in the rows then column wise that is the branches the branches are arranged like tree branches and uh, link branches uh, uh, the current direction away from the node means take minus one the current direction towards the node means take plus one the mat uh, form this matrix like this that matrix is the incident matrix then this is the y primitive matrix this is the diagonal matrix the diagonal element only contains the line admittances first of all form the impedance then we take inverse otherwise directly form the line admittance matrix the remaining the upper and lower half triangles values are zero this is the y primitive matrix this is the transpose of this incident matrix so I multiply these three values you get y bus matrix by singular transformation method is get this like this then inspection method inspection method um, easily form the y bus matrix this is very important for um, multiple choice two mark questions in first unit here the diagonal element is formed by using uh, the sum of admittance of all element connected to ith node here in here, ith node what are the elements are connected just add this admittances value suppose the impedance value that is positive plus j value is given means that is the impedance value that value is means uh, just to take reciprocal and add the value then off diagonal elements that is y12 y13 etc like this elements calculate the negative of admittance between i and j this calculate these are the important points in the first unit you can practice this mcq test through this uh, link the link is provided at the description box also you can directly click the uh, link and attend the first unit mcq questions these are the important topics then unit 2 unit 2 power flow analysis the power flow analysis the another name of power flow analysis load flow analysis here weibus matrix is essential for power flow analysis without weibus matrix we can't solve the power flow analysis equations uh, the purpose of this power flow analysis or load flow analysis are planning expanding maintaining and monitoring the power systems uh, the parameters obtained the calculated are real power reactive power magnitude of voltage and the load angle these four parameters are uh, analysis or calculated then and uh, second point here three types of buses power system consists of three buses that's are generator bus load bus and slack bus generator bus means p and magnitude of values are specified value that is the given value the calculated values the load flow equation can be solved to find uh, the values the reactive power and the phase angle or load angle the load bus the another name of load bus is pq bus real power and reactive power values are given the calculated values are the value to be calculated are magnitude of voltage and the phase angle then slack bus we take one of the generator buses taken as the 
flag bus for line loss calculations. Here, the magnitude of voltage and the load angles are specified. Uh, P and Q values are to be calculated. Then second important one is gauss Seidel method. Here in gauss Seidel method, uh, this is the power flow equation. Va nu is equal to 1 divided by Oe11. Pa specified minus Jqa specified divided by a volt star. This is the conjugate of this voltage. Minus summation J is equal to 1 to I minus 1. Oeij Vj nu minus summation I is equal to I plus 1 to N. Oeij Vj volt. Then also in gauss Seidel method, then advantage and disadvantages of this gauss Seidel methods are important. The advantage, this is for applicable for small type of system. The computer memory required also list. The program, program also symbol, the accuracy is low. The, the disadvantage, the accuracy is low. Then second one is newton raphson method. Here in newton raphson method, the Jacobian matrix size is 2n minus m minus 2. Here n is the number of buses, m. M is the uh, number of generator buses, number of generator buses except slack bus. Generator bus examples are, uh, another name of generator buses are PV bus, voltage controlled bus, then generator bus, re uh, reactive power supplied bus. These are the generator bus names, other, another names. Then fixed capacitor bus is the load bus. Don't take the fixed capacitor buses, generator bus. This is the load bus, fixed capacitor buses, the load bus then minus two. Using this uh, formula, we can calculate the matrix size, Jacobian matrix size. Also here in newton raphson method, uh, advantages sir, it is applicable for large size of uh, power system. The calcula calculation is complete, complicated. The, completed, uh, the computer memory required also more. The result is accurate one. The third unit, symmetrical fault analysis. Symmetrical fault means fault current in the three phases are same. It is a most severe type of fault. Only 5 percentages fault are symmetrical fault. The example symmetrical fault is three phase fault. That is the three conductors are touches together or the three conductors are touches with ground. That type of faults are called three phase fault. Here, uh, the Z bus matrix is important. In case of symmetrical fault analysis, Z bus matrix is important. The Z bus matrix is formed by inversing the Y bus matrix. The matrix size is very small to cross two matrix means just to take inverse and find out the Z bus matrix. Or otherwise is calculate by using the bus building algorithm. Here bus building algorithm, four cases are there. Using the four cases, easily find out the bus admittance matrix. This is very much important for calculating the fault current in case of fault analysis, Z bus matrix. Then here the fault current is equal to VQ0 divided by ZQQ plus ZF. VQ0 is the pre-fault voltage that is taken as one per unit or it taken from the load flow analysis. Normally it's taken as one. one. Then ZQQ is the fault impedance that is obtained from Z bus matrix. ZF is the fault impedance. In case of solid fault or ungrounded, the, in case of solid fault that value is zero. Uh, the fault is through another one medium means the impedance value, fault impedance value is given. Here, add this value in the denominator. Then, after fault, calculate the voltage. This is the post fault voltages. Post fault voltages is equal to pre fault voltage minus the drop. Drop is the Z IQ that is obtained from the Z bus matrix. Then, IF is the fault current that is, is the, the formula. Then, fault level or short circuit ratio or short circuit capacity. That is calculated by using this formula 1 divided by XTH. XTH is the reactance, Thevenin's reactance. Um, the simplified reactance is that just to take inverse, you get the fault level or short circuit capacity. Then uh, by the use of series reactance, the fault current can be reduced. Here use any type of series reactance. The third unit link is provided. Also, it is given in the description box. You click the link from this description box directly and you can attend the third unit MCQ questions. The fourth unit is unsymmetrical fault analysis. Unsymmetrical fault means fault current in the three phases are unequal. That's are different. So he required calculation for each phase separately. Here, using one symmetrical component method, the symmetrical component method, A is, A is the letter that is denoted as 
operator A. If you rotate the angle in anti-clockwise direction, you get another angle, another angle or another vector. Anti-clockwise direction is important, that bad. Then here, three types of uh, unsymmetrical faults are single line to ground fault. This is the frequently occurring fault. Uh, nearly 70% of fault are single line to ground fault. Here, the condition is the sequence current values are same. All the sequence current, positive sequence current is equal to negative sequence current and the zero sequence current. Then fault current is calculated by using the formula IF is equal to 3 into IA1 or IA0, IA2. Any one of the sequence current multiplied with 3 gets the fault current in case of single line to ground fault. Then line to line fault. In case of line to line fault, the positive sequence voltage is equal to negative sequence voltage. Here the important point is the zero sequence components are absent. There is no zero sequence component in case of line to line fault, double line fault. That fault that is IA0 is equal to zero and VA0 is equal to zero. Then the positive sequence current is equal to the negative of zero. Se um, uh, the positive sequence current is equal to the minus of negative sequence current. Both current directions are opposite directions. Then double line to ground fault. That is line to line to ground fault. Line to line to ground fault. The sequence voltages are same. Positive sequence voltage is equal to negative sequence voltage. That is equal to zero sequence vo voltage. Then currents, all the sequence currents are different. Positive sequence current is not equal to negative sequence current, which is not equal to zero sequence current. Here the fourth unit link is provided here. Also, this is given in the description box. Directly click the link and attend the fourth unit multiple choice questions. Practice the multiple choice questions. Then unit five, stability analysis. Stability means ability of the power system remain in synchronism after subjected to a disturbance, small disturbance. That means steady state stability. Sudden disturbance means transient stability. Here, after the disturbance, the power system is synchronism or stable. That means voltage is coincident with the tie line voltage. Then the frequency also coincident with tie line frequency. That means the synchronous generator rotated at constant speed. That is called stability. At the time, the maximum power is flowing. The, the, after disturbance have been up after that the power power flow there is no variation in the power flow the maximum power is transferred from the sending end to receiving end. same means the power system is stable a uh, different stabilities are there here um, uh, the stability is the important formula is per unit inertia constant h is equal to stored kinetic energy megajoule of turbine alternator and excitor Rotor at synchronous speed divided by mission rating in megavolt ampere. Here, this is the actual value divided by base value. Then, second formula, important formula, swing equation. Swing equation, h divided by pi of d square delta divided by dt square is equal to pm per unit minus p per unit. Mechanical power minus electrical power. This is also important point formula. Then, equal area criterion. By the use of equal area criterion, we can uh, find the stability of the system. If the system is stable, d delta divided by dt is equal to zero. That is, and also the integral delta naught to delta pa into d delta is equal to zero. That means the positive area is equal to negative area. That is the acceleration area. The difference between positive area minus the negative area is called accelerating area. The accelerating area is zero means the system is stable. Then unstable system d delta divided by dt is greater than zero. That means the positive area not equal to negative area. The accelerating area not equal to decelerating area. That means the system is unstable. Then critical clearing angle and critical clearing times are important. This is required for, um, it is the indicator for transient stability. Transient stability, maximum transient stability limit can be obtained by using this critical clearing angle and critical clearing time. Then modified Euler's formula. This one is the modified Euler's formula. Sometimes may uh, ask in the multiple choice questions. These are the unit wise links. You can click these links in this description box and practice the multiple choice questions. Thank you.